I hope everybody. So we're just looking at some acro, final acro growth. Don't know whether you can see that. It's quite a nice one, this one actually. I've had this, it survived. There's some nitrates going in. Go on, nitrates, feed this tank. Um, yeah, I've had this throughout all the crashes actually. It survived all my crashes. <laughs> so, and, and now it's finally grown because I've been dosing a lot of stuff. Been really upping the dose, been getting regular ICP tests. And I do love the sort of colours on these. I love that sort of fluorescent opaqueness. Beautiful. Really nice. I think I've seen it called a mankini, this. But, uh, Finally, coming to grips with my refugium. Let me just send you over to my refugium. As you can see, it's rammed. Now I have some thoughts on uh, ch Chetomorpha. Yeah, let me just show you the bubbles. Look at all those bubbles. I don't know whether you can see those bubbles. No, you probably can't. But uh, yeah, it's growing, growing well. And normally when it got, got this full in the past, I'd half empty it. I'd half empty it and then I would have to decrease my phosphates, my phosphate dosing, de sorry, decrease my nitrate dosing, uh, decrease, you know, increase lanthanum because my phosphate started going up so now I've got to the point where I uh, my phosphates are just going to zero with that amount of Chato growth uh, it's quite crazy but it's taken that much Chato to deal with my phosphates my nitrates I have to dose it's phosphates that are out of control in this whole system but with that amount of chato as I say my phosphates are in control and I'm dosing about I don't know three parts three sorry about three ppm two to three ppm of, of nitrates and like I say in the old days, I would have taken half of that Chato out and then I would have been back to square one. So what I'm, tr what I'm trying to say is one, can you see how dark it is at the bottom? It's pretty, it's almost, well not pitch black, there'll be some light getting through. But I've seen all these people with their Chato spinning balls. And I'm interested to know if anybody has rather than doing that just let their their chato tanks or receptors or whatever it is they grow it in um, have, have let it grow so that it's really dark because what I'm finding is the maximum amount of nitrate and phosphate uptake is when my tank is half dark I mean, okay, maybe if it was all light, would it be quicker? But I'm not so sure. I just feel that Chato Morpha, what it'll probably do is, I, I, I'm guessing, I'm assuming it's chlorophyll, <laughs> chlorophyll, but you know, the green, the green in plants and the green in seaweed or whatever. I'm assuming it just becomes more dense in the Chato Morpha and therefore it, it can handle darker situations so all this thing about having your ball spinning so it's getting as much light I'm skeptical as to whether it really matters and whether people have tried you know their Chato chamber chamber was the word I was looking for have you and have you got to the point where you can actually measure you know have you got a big enough chamber that you can see oh yeah this is this is taking up a lot of nitrate and I can measure that nitrate. In which case, try letting 
it get really packed where it gets quite dark and see if the nitrates carry continue you know the the amount being uptaken by the chato uh, is still going up even though it's getting darker and darker you know you, it's getting denser and denser so i'm interested to know if anybody's tried that because i'm i'm finding that so this guy this guy was tiny literally a month ago and it's like tripled in size i mean it was it was it was this size before so this is growing nicely but i mean these are quite easy to grow and as i say you soon um yeah you soon once it takes off they really take off i've i got some hermit crab shells and i'm so glad i did because uh, my halloween hermit crab who of course is hiding at the moment the poor thing for a year has been trudging around in a very small home and I thought oh the poor thing he was always trying looking at old shells in there old strawberry conch shells and they were too small and so I thought right so I went on the net so if anybody's interested just drop a note in the UK because there's a great place quite cheap the shells are and I got about I think I got 16 strawberry conch shells um, for about 10 quid or something which is I thought was, well, it was cheap compared to other places um, so so this is what the tuxedo does cleaning wise look at all that cleaning he's been really busy it's quite odd that the tuxedo for ages doesn't touch the stone and then suddenly it just starts going nuts on the stone so I think at night time it's gone all it's gone over here and cleaned over here as well so my these are too it's too dark here because it's so shaded because of my style of fora which is just out of control really just too right near the top now so I need to I need to um, chop it back down at some point uh, but stuff's doing quite well I dare I say it I still have tin in fact I'm getting an ICP test back tomorrow and uh, I get I've got high iron and high tin the high iron is due to dosing for the Chato so I'm just trying to dial that in and realize I mean the this stuff like the Brightwell Chato and the um the one i've got which is continuum chato grow boy they are they are potent i mean you don't need much i mean i'm i'm using and and i'm still not sure but i think three drops a day of that chato grow and that is enough for the chato to grow and uh and the um brightwell i think is quite similar so let me show you I don't know what those dots are I think that might be a night where the flow is quite low you get a lot of detritus settling on the um, on the plating Montipora and I think that's why I'm getting these white blotches but I'm not sure uh, that digitata is growing nicely my digitata has always been slow growing I know I know other people grow it quite quickly but but I think at the moment I've got my phosphates dialed in to about I definitely don't like them going I don't know below about 12 you know six part I'm talking about parts per billion so 12 parts per billion is about 0 0.03 which is which is what supposedly you know zoas are okay with and anything lower I don't think they like it let me just turn this lumin thing off um, another thing I wanted to say actually was about Hannah Checker I'm wondering again whether anybody has this not it's not an issue it's not an issue and it's not a criticism what it is is I find I, 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 I what I do when I take a Hannah reading is for my phosphates is I have two vials 
I fill both of them initially with the tank water. Then with one of the bales, I, I put the um, reagent in. And then when it gets to two minutes stirring and then three minutes waiting, and then I do a test, you know, I press the buttons and out comes the test. So I put the clear one in first, uh, clear tank water, and then I put the one with the reagent in. And, and I do that a few times, and I'm not quite sure. I seem to remember them saying, oh, you only do it once. But anyway, I do it a few times, and then I try and get a sort of idea of... And what I've found is when the phosphates are very low in the tank is when I measure it a number of times, the each time I measure it, you know, in that particular moment, um, it bounces. So one minute it will say three parts per billion, the next minute it will say 20 parts per billion, then it will bounce to five parts per billion, and 16, and I'm like, hmm, okay. And, and then when it's a, at about 12, so I, I, then I measure it another time and where the phosphates are a little bit higher what I'm saying is the HANA checker seems to be able to it doesn't seem to be very accurate if you're or consistent if your phosphates are low it's like it struggles to see the colour because it's a colour metric colour metric, I don't know if that's the right word so it's colour metric, so it, it's on intensity of colour, I think, that it does it. And I think when it gets to really low levels, like, you know, six parts per billion, which is your 0 0.018 ppm, it, it's not very good at detecting it, or less so. So again, so when it bounces, I think, OK, my phosphates are really low then. And when it doesn't bounce and I get a consistent you know, 12, 13, 15, 12 in a, on a particular moment, a particular test, and I think, right, okay, my phosphates are at about 12 or 13. When they bounce, 3, 10, 8, 20, I think, mm, right, okay, maybe they're about 6 or 7 or something like that. And I, do, I don't like it being that low because uh, my zoas look bloody awful. I mean, they don't look particularly amazing at the moment. I wish it would focus. There we go. Um, at the moment, I, at the moment, I think the phosphates are too low. I might, I might pump some phosphates in, dose a bit of phosphates. I've actually taken a little bit of Chetomorpha out today because my phosphates are bottoming out at zero. I'm taking enough out just so they stay, stay stable. So, Everything else I'm very happy with. Oh, I got this. It's the Nero 3, which I really love. I love it. It's quiet. And, and it has the patterns you can do with it. You can choose any number of different patterns at any time of the day. Um, very flexible. I mean, I believe this MP10 has a Mobius thing now. Uh, but I've not, I've not got, got there yet. In fact, I've not got wireless in there anymore because I managed to fry the electronics on my MP10. Uh, that's another thing. If you've got an MP, any of the MPs, do not get any water anywhere near those controllers. I mean, I literally, I didn't get much water in it, and boom, it was gone. Hundred quid, bang. I think I've said that before in a video. I was, a, I was a bit, a little bit annoyed with with um ecotech they didn't they didn't they weren't bothered and I, I even said look can you not make the bloody thing waterproof you know at this price 250 quid and you can't make the box a little bit waterproof come on what's going on anyway so this is my pride at the moment the fact that i'm i'm doing all right with this acro is it going to focus come on this stupid bloody thing no, it's not. Anyway, I've waffled on. I've waffled on. So that should do it for now. So I'll just take a step back. Um, yeah, but I'm, I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying it. I'm still not there. I've still got the bloody tin. 
the tin's still in there. It's at about five parts per billion. Although I'm getting an ICP tomorrow, so I may well put in what it is in the comments below. So thank you for watching, everybody. Cheers.